Did you ever realize that we in the United States are probably one of the lowest developed countries with regard to the poor and especially to young people? What are we going to do about that? My name is Father Mike Manning. God bless you. Thank you very much for listening to the show. As I, as I spoke to you in the tease, uh, there's something going on in our country that, oh gosh, it's like the elephant in the room. Something very, very serious. And it's the problem of poverty, and it's the problem of vast numbers of people living on, on mere subsistence and living without enough for mere subsistence. We're going to be talking with a a delightful nun who's going to be able to give us a little bit of insight from her own experience of getting so involved. Sister Gabby, God bless you. Thank God you bless very you much too. for coming Thank and you. being with us Thank today. Thank you very much. Too. You're a person who has dedicated your life. Oh, well, you're just burning with a desire to reach out to people that are hurting, people that especially are having economic mm -hmm. and social yes. and even personal problems, yes. whatever they may be, and that. And you're. You're not a person that likes a lot of fanfare, do you? No. No. <laughs> no. But more, more trying as best you can to be able to talk to a person. And so the only person you got to talk to now is me. And you got, <laughs> you got, you got to convince me about what you're talking about. Okay. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with God. If uh, this is a Christian television program, a Catholic program, and you're, mm -hmm. a, you're a Catholic nun, um, tell, tell us a little bit about the maybe even early struggles with your relationship with God? Hmm. Um, well, I am so grateful in my life for um, my parents, who um, were my first teachers, especially my mom, who I think was very encouraging um, to me. And uh, whatever were, I wanted to do, I was the oldest. Were you the church? Were they churchgoers? No, they were not. Oh, so they uh, didn't go to church? No, they didn't. But I did. Well, um, how did that happen? <laughs> How did that happen? I think like many Catholic parents, they, they want us to go to church and uh, go to religious education when we're children, and they did that. And my father wasn't Catholic, my mother was, but they didn't practice, but the, we, we were in a very religious home. Uh, no way. What do you mean, a religious home? Well, we prayed a lot in, 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 in our home. Oh, uh, my oh, mother yeah. would read the Bible to us. We would discuss that at oh, home. Oh, really? Excellent. And so we all had our favorite stories. You mean you Catholic, a Catholic family that was discussing the Bible? Is this? Yeah, I think it was an influence of my dad. Wow, that's great. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and so that, I think that was fostered. And, um, but now, so, where, did, where did this fire come about with regard to this strong commitment to, well, becoming a nun. I mean, that's quite a, that's quite a step from yes. perhaps parents that are not really that church going to right. suddenly being so involved in the church. Um, I just felt at home when I went to church. Uh, I, I just longed to go back. I could hardly wait for Sunday to come. And I remember I would walk by myself to go a block or two blocks, um, and you could walk in those days anywhere. <laughs> right. well, where uh, was this? Where were you raised? Uh, in. Uh, in Washington State, and okay. I lived in many different towns and okay, cities. Okay, Washington stuff. State. Yes. But now, um, let's kind of jump ahead here. Okay. Um, you've uh, moved from an experience of loving the Lord and, and being involved in the church. Yes. But now there's something that is touching, touching your own life. You, you told me about an experience of an Irish priest uh, oh. <laughs> that maybe said something and did something that might have turned your life in a, in a major direction. Yes. Share, uh, us, share with oh, us. With you. Um, I was 15 and I was listening to the, um, the homily in church and it was about the missions in South America. It was uh, really intriguing to listen to the stories that he was sharing uh, with the congregation. And just inside myself, I knew that's what I need to do. All of a sudden, it was 15. It was just, I was 15. Just, I was just 15. And uh, I didn't know how, what, or whatever, but my girlfriend, who was very Catholic, uh, introduced me to the priest. I didn't know him before that time. Um, 
and so I met him after church, and I, I said, I'd really like, you know, to, to do that. And he said, well, how old are you? And I said, I'm 15. And he said, oh, you have to be 18, because it's really the Peace Corps who does this. And I said, oh, okay, um, so how do I do that? I asked him, and he says, well, you know, you could become a sister. And I said, oh, no. I said, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they do, and I wasn't, uh, wasn't sure of that. Were there many nuns in, in your life? No, I didn't know any None. at that okay. time. Okay. Okay. And uh, so uh, he asked me to go downtown and get the Catholic Sisterhood Book of America, and it was pretty thick. And so I brought it to him with my girlfriend, and he said, okay, I want you to read the middle part. It was about that thick. It was all the missionary congregations in the United States, and I took three weeks to pray over every single congregation, and there were three that were important, the cloister uh, and the Franciscans and the Dominicans. So then I didn't know now, which what, one. Help me with that cloister. What, what does that mean? I, I didn't know. Uh, well, mean? sisters who would dedicate their life to prayer and, and service within their own uh, uh, community, and they do not do public So they works. wouldn't go out and preach like no. in America or whatnot, no, even no, though no, they no. might be there. Okay. But then, Dominicans and, and Franciscans, the Franciscans. That, those, are, those are religious communities that are yes. following a kind of the lead of a man by the name of Dominic. And, Saint and, Dominic, Saint and Francis. A, and a man by Francis. Who, Correct. Who kind of set up a whole yes. way of preaching and sharing the, the good news of Christ. And they form yes. communities, is that? Is Correct. That? Okay. Correct. Uh, I took another, um, he said, well, the cloister really didn't fit me uh, for the short time he knew me. And they said, I just want you to pray over these two communities, and I did. And so a few weeks later, I came back, and I said, well, I think I, I'm going to pick the Dominicans. And then he said, why? And I said, oh. And <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, because um, I like that they were a foreign mission in South Africa, and they served the poor. I liked that there was another language, a different style, a different food, a different people than what I knew. Wow. And that intrigued me to, to um, understand and learn about another people. So I decided on the Dominicans for that reason. And then uh, when I graduated from high school, I entered the community. And I've been in it for 40, near, coming up to 45 years. Wow. So, but yes. now um, you, you were able to get a little bit of mission activity, huh? So this, now this all started with the challenge of Latin America. Yes. And doing what you can to care for the poor. Yes. And did this happen? Yes, it did. After many years of teaching. <laughs> but it did happen, and I was sent to, uh, we're an international congregation, so I was sit, sent to um, uh, South America in Argentina, in the province of Misiones, which is on the border of Brazil and Paraguay. Now that's, I, I, I don't know too much about that, but isn't that kind of where they made the movie, The Mission? Exactly, the exact place. Robert De Niro and yes, all of this yes, thing. Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes. And that was a very beautiful, with the, with the waterfall. And yes, it's beautiful, beautiful. It thunders, it's so loud when you're in the presence of the water. You hear that waterfall. Yes, so I worked among the, the people of Mbai tribe. So and th these, are, these are natives? Yes, yes. Ooh. Yes. That was a lot of, was it poverty? Was it was it a lot of struggle and, and, and? Oh, very difficult life, very difficult life. In what um, way, in what way? Um, I had to continue to let go of what I felt comfortable with and to know and understand the people who had less than nothing or nothing um, to identify. And I just kept these three. Well, that's a big, that's a big jump. Yes. Because you had, you had lived in a comfortable life. Once you're a member of a religious community, you've got enough food, you've got a place yes. to stay, and you've got security. And all of yes. a sudden now, you, did you jump into their life and, and oh, yes. experience them yes. intimately? Yes. Because I, I, I started off with, I'm for the poor. You know, I, I will do what I can for the poor. And then I moved from for the poor to with the poor, understanding their lifestyles, their experiences, and just listening, listening, listening to absorb and try to understand how one can be, uh, you know, existing and living with nothing, uh, nothing. And then... Um, I mean, wait a minute, they, they, they got enough food, don't they? They got food? Or? No, uh, it's... Um, it's the, enough food, I would not say so. This is a very, there are seven provinces in Argentina or in South America, there's many more poor places, very poverty stricken, where um, it's, there's a des you have the rich and the poor and you have destitute and the poor. Um, so they struggle with enough to eat? Right, they do struggle with enough to eat. Wow. Um, and so I've learned a lot uh, from the 
uh, elders of the tribe and the women of the different uh, towns and villages uh, about how you uh, try to sustain yourself, how to use the plants and medicine and— uh, oh, um, Just whatever and was so, there, huh? Yeah, so I worked 11 years in this with the community, so I really became the people. And Sister I became Gabby, very you sick. Know what you, you know what you're saying, Sister Gabby? You're saying that if you, if you take the risk of wanting to be a missionary, you're going to be transformed, aren't you? You're going to be transformed by the yes. people with whom you take the courage to yes. relate to. Your, their values become your values in many ways. Exactly. And their, their perspective in life becomes yours. Yes. And so exactly. a missionary is not necessarily, and this is kind of interesting, he's not, he or she is not someone necessarily that gives a lot, but nine times out of ten, it's what you receive. Correct. Are you with me on that? I am totally with you on that. Yeah. So it's, it's about the giftedness of every person, no matter how large or small that gift is, but to appreciate and, and to bring that up inside the person that they know how valuable they are, no matter that they might not have this or they don't have this, but they do have a lot more than they see. And, and one of the problems that we see is that sometimes we can relegate the poor and the disenfranchised to not be significant. But what you're saying is that perhaps, and this might have motivated you for, a, for 11 years, this might be the greatest wealth that we could find of understanding what truth is and where a person really is. They, they don't have many of the distractions that we have exactly. in our world. They're people of being. We are a people of having. So to oh, say that again, say that again. They are, we are, I always say we because I belong to yeah. the people. We are a people of being, but here in this culture, we are a people of having. And if we could let go of the having somewhat and to begin to be better lovers and listeners of the other, then we, we enter into a different experience of being with each other because that's really all we have. Wow, okay, listen, we're going to come back. I've, we got a commercial coming in here now. Okay. I want you to listen to this, and then I want to hear. Sickness came, and you were you were pulled out of the people that you love. Yes. And you were brought to this crazy world of the United States of America to minister. Yes. And I want to hear a little bit of that. Please stay tuned. We're going to be right back. I don't know about you, but I believe in prayer. I really believe that the Lord hears us when we pray, and I believe that miracles can happen when you pray, and those miracles might not happen if you don't pray. I know you share that faith with me. Well, in my excitement about prayer, I've prepared something for you. It's called pocket prayers. Look, look how small it is. It's filled with wonderful Catholic prayers, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Creed, um, the mysteries of the rosary, the acts of contrition, the morning and evening prayers, and oh, there's some special Catholic prayers that I know you love, like the Memorare. But it's also filled with very special prayers, prayers that are going to touch you day in and day out in your life. One of the prayers that I like very much is the prayer for healing. Ah, uh, and even a prayer in financial problems, and oh my, we're struggling with that now. There's even a prayer for uh, getting ready to drive. Please, I would love for you to have this for your donation of one dollar or more. This is something that you can put in your pocket, you can put in your purse, and pull out at all kinds of exciting times or even waiting times. It's something you can use at work, you can use it at home, you can use it at school when you're waiting for a bus or you're waiting for the doctor. And mm, I'd love you to get this and perhaps pass it on to a friend, a wonderful gift. Please, would you contact us? You can do it by email, by letter. Please pick up the phone and also contact us through the web page. Remember, Pocket Prayers, a powerful way of making prayer alive and God coming into your life with blessings and peace. Thank you. Please let me hear from you. Sister Gabby, you got the, the dream of your life. You were able to go to Latin America. You yes. were able to live for, you said, 11 years? Yes. With the very, very poor, and you were enriched by the beauty of what they were, and mm -hmm. you're even wanting to say, 
we whenever you refer to them because you feel yes. that you have given yourself to them and become them. But then something happened with regard to your health. Tell us about that. Well, um, everyone becomes ill in that type of existence. And uh, there are many, many parasites in the water. So I had quite, um, quite a bit of parasites. And that um, can make you very ill. And I became very, very sick, very sick. And so the sisters came from South Africa to take me back to the United States. But um, I said, you know, I really don't want to go back sick. I really want to um, get myself better here, and then I'll go back. And, uh, and also, I had many orphans that I had—you go house to house, or I did house to house to get to know the families, and I would find children raising children. And um, so I'd work with doctors and agencies in order to help the children have homes or a place. And so I worked with the community there to um, form a nonprofit for the poor so that wow, they that's wonderful. could, yes, uh, help themselves. Um, and so that still goes on. Um, and then eventually I did come back, I came back to the United States. So uh, you're, you're here in Southern California. This is one of the delights of this television show. We can get all these gems of people who are local <laughs> to come by and be able to share their thing. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing here now? What's going on? Um, I was fortunate and I'm very grateful to be able to work here in the Diocese of San Bernardino uh, among um, my people in the Coachella Valley who also have a similar, um, very close existence to the people I served in South America. In what way? And in what way? I, th I, I would imagine that the poverty there would be, well, would be much more acute than it is here. Uh, there's tremendous close similarities. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a hidden existence, I think, or not seen or understood as well. And, um, but uh, maybe they have um, a better place to live than the people I served in South America. But it, for our standards in the United States, um, very poor. Mm -hmm. It's um, just not acceptable. You told me a story that kind of sent a shiver up my spine. Would you relate that story to me of the, the family that uh, kind of touched the depth of what you're talking about with poverty yes. that we don't realize yes. here within our own confines or our, our own limited, yes. limited area? Um, Tell us. That's one true. of the families I became very close to, and there are many I, I know, after three years of working in the Coachella Valley, in the eastern Coachella Valley. Coachella Valley is kind of down by related to Palm Springs, yes. but further on. So deep, yes. deep in the desert, there are Correct. places like uh, yeah, you have Palm Mecca, Springs in there at the very end, yes. Yeah, and yeah. So you can have a great deal of wealth in that's Palm right. Springs with the, the swimming pools and the, and, yes. the, uh, mm -hmm. and the golf courses and the tennis yes. courts and whatnot, but it, not too far from that yes. extreme, extreme poverty. Yes. For me, it's, it's about bringing the reality of who we are to each other and uh, our faith beliefs, our values, um, and you see that other things just drop away when we get into a real conversation about how a person who has can really help another who has not. So it's trying, for me, I see that we need to weave ourselves together, that we actually belong together as a people and not divided because of our economic status. But we need to call each other to that and remind each other that people have been blessed and others haven't been as graciously blessed. So how can I reach out to make a divide possible? Uh, it's like bridging people, the gaps that are existing. So um, I, I received a phone call from a, a very young family that, that had um, two children, two boys, and it was a month old, a little boy. And I came to the home, and they, they asked me, is it okay um, uh, if they would— uh, can give their child for $10,000, because they were offered $10,000 for their little newborn. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they said, uh, we can't pay our rent, we can't pay our bills, we can't um, uh, buy enough food for our children ourselves. Um, it, it's, you know, we, we are farm workers, we don't have what we need in order to, to live here. What's very important to the indigenous people is your inheritance. And I reminded them that this baby uh, belongs to your parents. 
This baby belongs to your grandparents. This baby belongs to your great-grandparents. It's what we give to each other as we grow. And trying to help and recall how important our ancestors are to us in the indigenous tribes. Uh, because you, you don't want to lose what you've been God-given. This is a, a gracious gift. And I said, I'll be back in an hour. So I went home and I made some dough and I found a card, I brought my camera. And I was thinking how I'm not going to convince them, only God can do that. But by talking about where they want to be in the future with their family, um, I, I made two little doughs and I asked them to take the children in their arms and uh, I asked the mother to put the baby's hand in the dough. And so she did that, but the baby pulled it up like that and, and let it go. So we had these fingers in the dough, and then the father took the other little boy, and he was able to put his hand in the dough. And I said, this is a, 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 a pack that we're going to make, that um, it's masa. This is an important thing. Bread is an important sustenance for life. So we remember our what children— is, I'm sorry, what is masa? Masa is bread, you know, the dough. Okay. And it's a sustenance for our life. And it's a very—we um, uh, want to relate to that masa because it gives us life when we eat it. So that the handprints—and I, I said, I'm going to bake this. And I had a little card, and it was around Christmas time. And I wrote on the card, uh, I said, we're going to send this to Bishop Barnes. And uh, we're going to, I'm going to tell Bishop Barnes how, from the point of the children, how much our parents love us, how much they care for us, how much they want us. And, um, and they signed it after I wrote it down in Spanish for them. And, um, and I put, and I baked it, put it together. And I asked him if he could also send a picture so that I would have the picture of the family with the bread, mm -hmm. and we sent that as a Christmas gift, and they decided not. I didn't talk them out of it. I just wanted to remind them that they have to make the choice for God in their future. Uh, and and the, they— the, the bread was a gift to Bishop Barnes. To Bishop Barnes. Gotcha. for Christmas, okay. But he doesn't know the story behind it. Of course, okay. <laughs> But so what, what happened? What happened? They decided not to, and I, I said I would uh, help them connect with agencies and people so they would have food, and I would, uh, you know, do some fundraising, help them to see if they could get a, a little bit more um, uh, extra funding so they, they could pay their rent, and then, um, and then I had them help me in certain projects in the desert so that we are you give and you receive, you give and you receive. So it's not that we give handouts, but we have to belong to the community. Sister Gabby, t tell me, uh, you're, you're admirable. You know, this, is, this is giving your life and the missions giving your life here to the, to the poor here. I'm, I'm sitting at home and I'm wondering, what practically can I do? What can I do to try to make, make a difference? I think we have to start with our own heart, with each other, our families our neighbors, the people we know. Um, it's very hard sometimes. It's easier to go out there, somewhere else. But we need to, to really practice our faith, and our faith begins in our family. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you know, if we need to need the forgiveness, the understanding, the talking, maybe it's blocked off, we can't go there. But we certainly can uh, pray for that healing, some kind of healing in our life, to, to be for the other better than maybe we have been in the past, even by a smile, calling somebody. I said, I know you don't want to talk to me, but um, just know that I'm praying for you. And then hang up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully but just no. to get, get, the, get, get your two cents in before Right, can, can, right. Yeah. We have to start small. Start small. Because we need to know to go where we can help. And when you know somebody, uh, neighbors or whatever, it, it's the big starting of something. You don't have to go too far. It's all around us. But God bless you. Thank we're, you. We're going we're to come back in a little bit, and I want to hear about this. Uh, there's an award. It's called the Lumen Christi uh, that you received in the, yes. in the presence of bishops and all kind of people, yes. accentuating the beauty of, of what you've done. Stay tuned. We're going to do that, and we're also going to be praying for your special intention. So stay tuned. Listen to this message, and we'll be right back. You and I believe in prayer. Prayer changes everything. And I've prepared a wonderful little gift for you 
to help with your prayer. It's called pocket prayers. It's, it's wonderful. They can fit in your, in your purse, in your pocket. And you can pull it out and pray the Catholic prayers that we know, but also some of the special prayers that I've composed that I hope will allow God to come into your life with greater force. Please, remember the prayer for healing, oh, financial help, and remember also a, a simple prayer that is going to be said before you start driving. Remember, this can be used at work, at home, at school, while you're waiting for a bus or waiting for a doctor. It's also a wonderful gift to share with people you love. For only one dollar or more, you can have this. Please contact us. Let me know that you're part of this ministry in a great way. God bless you. Sister Gabby, all the great things that you said, both your, your mm -hmm. work in Latin America and your work here in Southern California with the poor, has been uh, rewarded, if you will, by a, a beautiful award called the Lumen Christi, the Light of Christ. Mm -hmm. You were yes. recommended by Bishop Barnes, who's the bishop here in, in San Bernardino. Yes. And it was a great chance for people to say thank you it was. for what you've done. And you could even get a, a copy <laughs> of that on, on I think, that, that uh, with your name and whatnot on, on a YouTube situation, huh? That's correct, on yeah. the website of uh, Catholic Extension website. Okay. Catholic mm -hmm. Extension was the ones that, that gave yes. that, yeah, which is also a very, very beautiful way of serving the poor. Here exactly. in the United States. Yes, it is. Well, Thank you. We try to serve people too with, with uh, opening up our hearts as best we can, not only talking to people, but also offering the chance for people to, to write letters, to make mm -hmm. telephone calls, especially to let us know what their prayer intentions are, and to believe in the midst of all the great things that you yes. do, mm -hmm. that prayer is also a very important fact of that. Are you with me on that? I'm so with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm asking. Uh, I'm asking that we would pray for these people, but yes. there's another thing that we do, and that's a, a thing with a blog with, through our, our webpage. Um, and we'd like to hear from people, again, getting action going back and forth. Yes, and good. And the, the question that I would pose to you is, as we're talking with Sister Gabby about poverty, um, how do you react to the people that you see at the, at the end of freeways or standing in the, on your streets with signs of, I'm hungry, I need help, I need work. Are they scams or are they sincere? And how do you respond in that dilemma to those kind of people? Give me a chance. We've got great people that have, that have written to us and that have asked uh, um, um, uh, Michael uh, from California wants to come closer to the Lord. Oh, Leona from South Dakota, uh, she's asking for help with her finances. And she's Stronger. also struggling with loneliness. Mm. Uh, Carol Bauman, a dear friend of mine, uh, she um, caring for some of the people that are part of her life. Good. Lord, come bring about miracles. Yes. Strengthen all these people with your love and your care. And may Jesus' love for you always make you smile.